This year, our focus has been on joining up health services so people experience seamless care and get support from the right team first time. We wanted to support people living with a long-term breathing condition differently, so we took the service out to them and into their homes. Here's Laura from the Breathe Service and Karen explaining what it has meant to her. You don't want to spend your time, you're ill. You want to be in your own home when you're ill. And that's, I've never had this before. I mean, I'm always a couple of months and I'm back in when you're more near again. So I've always spent my time in hospital, but this time I've spent it at home with nurses on hand if I need them, make a call. It's been on it. It's changed my life around, basically. I've got my life back. Anyone with a bone, muscle or joint problem is now assessed within 48 hours and referred for the right treatment first time. The new MSK model is about getting people to the right person at the right time. Uh, and what we have now is a 48 hour triage and what we do in that process they're looking to see if there's anything that needs urgent attention so there's no delay in the process for these patients. And the new diabetes service now joins up all the different teams involved in someone's care with more support now available in GP surgeries. By working together, the Barnes Integrated Diabetes Service hopes to provide care closer to home for all our Barnes patients and allow them to manage their own long-term conditions more effectively. We offer education to not only patients but doctors and practice nurses so they can also help manage patients' care closer to home to stop them having any knee admissions, hospital admissions and that is one of our main drivers for this service. High quality healthcare for people living in a care home is vital. Joining up the way teams at the hospital, neighbourhood nursing, GP practices, the council and care homes work together has had a huge impact. We have seen a drop in care home residents being admitted to hospital by over 30%. Initially at the CCG we identified that falls being one of the major sort of admissions to hospital and that needs to reduce across Barnsley. If you look at the public health stats, Barnsley comes off sort of quite high for hospital admissions post fall. So what we wanted to do is try and look at that and see why that were happening. So once patients fall, it shouldn't just be a default but it's a 999 call and then an admission to hospital. There should be a bit of an assessment take place around whether or not it's appropriate for that patient to go to hospital or whether or not another community service could be involved or whether a GP could be contacted and really enhancing that patient experience as well because actually a lot of the stuff that happens in hospital we can do in community and deal with quite well it's just being able to have the knowledge and understanding uh, of what services are available and how to access them. Working together with our partners we designed a therapy based intermediate care service. BBC News featured the ACORN unit as part of NHS 70th coverage showing what a difference the new joined up services are making. Well, next week the National Health Service turns 70 and we're marking the occasion with a series of special reports looking at how it's changed and changed lives over the decades. In Barnsley Hospital, a new unit has been set up to help people get back on their feet once they're discharged. Led by therapists, results are encouraging. Tom Ingle reports. Can you shrug them back and round? With Tom Jones on backing vocals, an exercise class with a difference is underway at Barnsley Hospital. So bending and straightening up at your, at your elbows. No one is here to train for a marathon or to set a personal best. The point is just to get moving. Welcome to the ACORN unit. If you can't do both legs alternately, just do one at a time. So what, when are we expecting the patient? It's a new idea, a partnership between local health trusts. So we're a 24-bedded unit, we're therapy-led, which is what's most unique about the unit. Patients that have come into the hospital for whatever reason, or patients out in the community, can be signposted to the unit for further rehabilitation, um, to improve independence and function, and mobility. Hence the exercise class, just one of the unit's initiatives. It's all about getting up and about, beating what's sometimes known in hospitals as pyjama paralysis. There are two significant benefits patients can leave hospital sooner and they're less likely to be readmitted once they've gone home. Everything that they possibly could do to help me, they've helped me. Marjorie came to the unit after a stay on a conventional ward at Barnsley Hospital. She'd had a fall at home. They've got me walking. Everything, they've just been absolutely brilliant. They can't do enough. Exercises 
and also help when I go home. I can walk when I go to this leg when I come. And then I'm walking. But it's up to us as well to play our part in it. What we're doing is we're creating um, the patient flow through the hospital. So we're creating more beds so that patients aren't sort of sat waiting on the inpatient wards. We've also got direct referrals from A&E um, and the clinical decisions unit and acute medical units as well. So they can come straight from those areas straight up to the unit. So do you want to pick seven? There's a social side too, keeping patients mentally active while they are with the unit. Established for just six months, the benefit of the therapy-led approach is already being recognised. This acorn might lead to a mighty oak for the NHS. Tom Ingle, BBC Look North, Barnsley. We've continued to work with young people this year as they help design and champion mental health support across schools and colleges. Here's what it means to one of the Oasis volunteers. I am Angel and I represent the young people of Oasis and Chili Pep. At Oasis we have got to meet new people who have experiences in mental health and we want to use this to make positive changes. We especially want to help others and to make everyone feel welcome. We want to help people with their negative issues and be a place where people can express themselves and their identities and know that you're not alone. We all wish to have new experiences and meet different people who may be able to help us in many different ways. We believe that we are all unique in our own way. We would like to bandage all those mental wounds just like you would the physical ones and encourage people to accept yourself for who you are and that you need to love yourself and the others around you. Knowledge of support and ways to help comes in ways just like new opportunities do. Don't let barriers get in your way. We are working to improve access and awareness of mental health services in Barnsley for young people. You can achieve anything you want, you just have to believe in yourself. Over 1,000 Barnsley people have been supported by My Best Life this year. Meet Jane and Joe. Uh, I've got a lovely son and daughter, and um, I had an absolutely wonderful husband, but unfortunately, um, three years ago, um, he was diagnosed with a, a brain tumour, and he was only given so long to live. And then the inevitable came and Steve passed away. I finished up depressed. It just felt like a big black hole consuming me. I couldn't find a way out. And I had three attempts of taking my own life. But I didn't seem to find the help that I needed. I worked in the South area and I received a referral in from, for Jane. I turned up and she didn't look at me, um, eyes down to the floor. And I thought to myself, how am I going to, you know, engage, you know, this lady? And she's got two dogs and we, you know, I heard the dogs barking and we talked about dogs. For about ten minutes we talked about dogs. And then I just said to her, so tell me what's the matter? And she just told me about everything that had gone on in her life and how she'd reached this point. She was cooking on a camping stove. Uh, she got no electricity on. Um, she was in a bed clothes. All the clothes were, because all the clothes were too big for her and everything. And she was just very emotional. We got onto her money and it was clear that she weren't on any benefit. She was surviving on four to seven pound a week. She got debt, um, especially on her meter with electric, um, water rates, she got debt, she got no food in. Um, so it was for me um, dealing with the priorities um, to try and get a, you know, like settled. So what I did initially on the first visit would make a call to DWP um, and got a benefits. I ordered a food parcel so she, at least she'd got some food. Um, and we started off a grant for Charis to get a utility debt paid off. And once we got all the priorities in place, we then started looking at stretching her to get back out into the community because she'd not been out of the house for about 18 months. The dog walking route really was the crux of it because she made new friends, different friends. Um, she went and she went out for walks and people came to pick her up and things like that so it was really lovely. Um, 
and just everything just gelled together. She didn't have to be going down to a GP's every week. She was seeing Nicola on a weekly basis and she's doing, well, she's just flourishing. She's, um, she's got a life back. It's a new life that she's got back really and she's uh, really happy and settled. If she hadn't have come that day, I wouldn't be here. That's an absolute definite. If you'd have seen me 12 months ago, I'd look completely different. I feel like, not my old self, a new self. I'm quite comfortable with what I've got now and where I am. It's a really, really good thing that they're doing, really good. Knowing what health services are out there and how to get in touch with them can be confusing. GP practice teams have been making it easier for people by training up and becoming champions for helping people navigate services and care. Here's Kay from the Kingswell Surgery to tell us more. It improves everything for everybody when with care navigation because um, you have less appointments being used for um, things that aren't necessary to see a GP for um, that a lot of the administration staff or reception staff can sort out. So we get time back there from appointments. Um, it's better for the patient than not being pushed from pillar to post, so oh, I've got to see a GP first and then I've got to go on to do this. So it's just better all around and it makes things flow better and um, there's always something or somebody somewhere that can help. Pharmacists now work in GP surgeries across the borough and are a central part of practice teams, working alongside the nurses and doctors to help people get the most out of their medicines. Here's Dr Farhan from St George's Medical Practice to tell us more. We have got a clinical pharmacist called Brendan, um, who has been working with us for several months. Having him here provide GPs and practice nurses extra help to manage long-term conditions, issues of polypharmacy and provide better access to health checks. It also helps to free up some of GP's time so they can focus their skills where they are most needed, for example in managing patients with complex conditions. Brendan has been helping us to, with the discharge summaries in updating medications and patients' records. He's also been liaising with hospital directly if there are some issues with the discharge summaries. Um, he has taken up a lot of our workload by managing queries that are sent from reception directly to him. He also does the medication reviews for us, in which he can contact patient on the phone or sometimes arranges face-to-face -face appointments with them. As part of our ambitious plans, GP practices have been looking at the benefits of joining up with a whole range of services, all centred around local communities, including consultants, therapists, neighbourhood nurses, mental health teams and My Best Life. With more and more health services being offered locally in GP surgeries, they are quickly developing their role as a hub in their local neighbourhoods. We're excited to develop these plans this coming year as we work alongside the residents, community and voluntary organisations and the council in the Dern to improve health and wellbeing together. The CCG's budget for 2017-18 was £413,063,000. If you picture the budget as a pound, here's how it is broken down across the services we fund. 50 pence goes on hospitals and patient transport. 12 pence goes on medications. 11 pence is spent on GP services. And 9 pence is spent on services based out in local communities. 8 pence is used for mental health services and funding continuing health care comes in at 4 pence. Our running costs are 1 pence with other programmes taking up 5 pence. Thank you for taking a trip through 2017-18 with us. It was another award winning year for us as a CCG, putting Barnsley on the map for excellence and innovation. We were highly commended in the HSJ CCG of the Year Award and won two national awards for helping people get the best out of their medications. We are also one of only 20 CCGs in the country to be rated outstanding by NHS England. 
The NHS as a whole is celebrating too this year as we recognise its 70th anniversary and the value the NHS brings to all of our lives every single day. Thank you for your role in that. Then? Amazing. Yes. That was so good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm surprised. <laughs> you so have to send me a copy. We all wanted to try and do one thing and that's about all working together to improve patient care. Do you want to say anything else? Do you want anything else you can think of? Five pages of stuff. <laughs> <laughs>